out on a little adventure today. I'm looking for some driftwood pieces to carve on and checking some uh, these are just log jams from the high water but it's a good place to get wood that's not necessarily dry like you're thinking but just not green you know already cured so it's not going to split after you carve on it oh, just heard something splash that's probably a turtle plus we'll keep our eyes out like there's whole it's an old river so all the old ranches have their dump sites and stuff but I think we're like the first people down on it at such high water which means it's high picking too but so many cool pieces looking for flat individual pieces like that that are kind of different and already weathered to carve into the faces and then I also like uh, Oh, bark that has enough of the uh, Cambrian layers and stuff to it to carve into. And if you find a perfectly good walking stick that somehow cured out, that's always a good thing too. See, that's branch cut, but the river beat all the bark off of it and it's already dried out. That's the type of thing that can take you months to get to stay straight and not crack and there are little flat boards like that that one's kind of rotten away though root wads the grain in there is just going to have a billion little knots from wherever all the branches and roots came out it's all feeling pretty light though and it even has that smell of uh, super lightweight wood being wet we're going to look around a little bit more. There's this log jam after log jam. Anybody need to reflect on anything? We got hats for sale. There's some nice gravels here too. We'll keep our eyes out for all kinds of things. You never know what this will turn into. You never know. Oh, look over there. That's pretty cool. You see it's a dump. There's old counters and everything else. A long time ago, though. It's not the uh, current owners. Spots like that are buried under 20 feet of a field dirt pushed in from above, so... That was back when it was the old, old days. Everybody used the river to dump into. This river got so high, look at these log jams, it's crazy. Should be able to pull a couple good staffs out of there. There's something good about uh, pulling them out of log jams before they rot too, because uh, you're not taking them off a living tree. So, they've already been donated to their fate. Oh, there's a cool bendy one. I'll let you know if I pull one out of here. Just wanted you to see the selection process a little bit. Just like anything else, it's got to have that perfect feel. Look, they're just giving away free hats around here. Okay, now look at that. That's big, but sometimes you want to start big and whittle down. That looks like oak with its bark removed. Let's climb up there and get that out of there. What it is, but it is gorgeous. It's huge. Look at that. That's my leg. And it has some sort of, it's a uniformly cracked. I don't mind. It's had all the bark peeled off of it. It's cured. I like that. That's a good chunk of, of something there. For sure. Look at what the water's already done for us. These are these pieces of bark that I was talking about. See how it's deep enough to actually carve into? And John, uh, who you've seen in other videos, my drummer, um, carves these. I'll show you an example of one and they're just really awesome. He does whole little scenes into them. This was just a piece of bark and 
that's part of the details is the little keyhole on the back that's so you can hang it on a hook John included that one and in the face of this he carved this and when he handed it to me he didn't hand it to me the right way and he wanted me to guess what it was and I thought it was like a moon rising out of the hills and he turned it this way and I realized what it was it's a See the nose and the eye? That's a wolf. Some little blades of grass looking at you through the crack in a maybe a tree or the bottom of a door. Some place where you're hiding. And it's that one little turquoise bead in there for the eyeball. Pretty cool, huh? Open scale. Look at that in the bed, and the colors to it are just, they're just insane. I don't know if it's gonna be a walking stick or a curtain holder for a closet. I don't know, but it is nice. I love it. Can't wait to do a cross section of it to see the color inside. Gotta tie it off though. Look at just down here where it gets wet. It, Gives indication of the other deeper reds and hues that it can get, and that shine is it's shine. You see that? Yes, it's, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna move on from this spot and see you at some other destination. So a lot of the sticks that I've done are actually gone and given away. I try and make them for somebody in mind and then give them away. But uh, these are two that I can still view and watch their aging and stuff. So these are about oh, almost 10 years old now. And it's eucalyptus. I'm saying there because there's two of them. This one is my dad's. And it's actually a whole eucalyptus tree. Um, you know, much larger than this. It's been carved down to this, of course. And you can see the root wad that stood this way. So there's all the knots when I say that there are uh, lots more knots where the roots are. You can see the example, but it gave it that really cool walking stick thing where you end up with the, the bigger chunk up at the top. And so of course I put flames on there so it looked like it was climbing up. That's just what came out of the wood. And they come down and twist around and just start a general pattern and turn into a spiral. This is all I use uh, files, knives, and sandpaper. So no machines on any of this. I don't do any dremels or anything so when you look really close it's been whittled and sanded and goes down into that pattern I just let the wood tell me what to do. Some of them are more ornate than others. Smooth area, that's where the hand grip goes. Is it that much sticking up. And down into some knot work. Just simple ins and outs. Repeating there, three of them. Four of them. bands and balls and this is actually a uh, I love eucalyptus when you do a whole tree because you get the grain work in there do you see that and then bright sun of course it's uh, got checkers of gold that come out and then this is another type of spiral I do where I leave one flat and round off the other and bevel it then Scales, but more dragony, more reptile. And this take a little while because then you got to go back and sand everything and clean it all up and little spots where the knife went over. Yeah, and then uh, always top and I like to call those lotus blossoms, you know, just big, a petal pattern. And I try not to go too deep with anything so it stays generally the same strength. Don't want to make one weak, sp weak spot. Um, and then there's another beveled and then flat spiral. 
into another set of scales or leaves. You know, that could be leaf work also. And I put his initials on there, W-A-M. More blossom and then just left it to get really smooth in its final wiggles. So, there's the whole step. That's one of the longest that I've done. And it's about head high to me. And I'll show you the other one here. You can see that it's not compromised anywhere too much. That's one of the key things is you don't want to go too deep so you start really big and then you carve down to what you want. But that's probably my favorite as far as the top of it. I have to dig down like 8 inches in the dirt, cut off a big dirty root wad, carve it all down, clean all the dirt out, dry it. I leave the bark on. It takes about 3 to 4 months under a bed laying flat. If they haven't split, then I carve them. Let me grab this other one here for you. The flames come down and start that pattern, which just repeats again and again and forms the spiral. The tree's impressed. See? Six five. This is the stick that I carved from my mom, and you can see the uh, the color coming out in it right now. The grain ended up. The sun came out for a second. The grain and it's just awesome. I mean, it it's like agate or marble. It had different layers in it. So we'll just start on the top here. I finished this one out so that you could see all of the bands and the years and the patterning. This one came from the same little grove of trees as my dad's did. And they actually cut those down because they were eucalyptus and they weren't native and they built something there so they're gone now. That's how I started the top of that one. Look it matches the Easter eggs. Just the way things work. And this one I started from a very thick piece of wood and I was taking it down to be uh, way skinnier than it was so I was able to go even dark deeper with the uh, cuts without compromising the strength. Oh look, there it is in the sun. Do you see the, the gold that comes out in the layers? And then down into a knot. And I don't know, this piece of wood, every layer went from amber orange to gold and it uh, disappears and shows up as you turn it. So I don't know if the camera will do it justice, but it comes down, does a basic knot, and finishes into that. I don't really have to have names for it, I just do it. And more balls and bands. You can see the grain work here as you come around and you, you bevel down the ends, it, it creates a windows into each of the layers. And then another lotus blossom or upside down leaves. And then for the the little Dutch touch, the German, I put uh, put some little wheels in there. Typical flower pattern as wards, you know, I figure always good to, to have your wards with you. And then this is a, a double band see one two one two three it actually might be three bands um, coming down there and each one beveled and into that pattern one down we got the uh, the leaf or feather or scale whatever you want to call it that one holding it real tight there And then the fish. And then the stick just finishes out. I always leave the bottom parts pretty uh, non-ornate because they get beat up the most. So don't want to put too much down there and uh, compromise it too low either. So if I'm going to do deep carving, I put it above where you're going to hold your hand so that it doesn't have any... Uh, any reason to break there, you know, all of the pressure that you're going to be putting is going to be between the tip and where your hand goes, basically. So, any 
fear of snapping will happen between there. But there's that one. But yeah, just wanted to show that to you. And we're going to start carving them again. I actually have one in the works right now for somebody special. So, okay, there you go.